In response to this question, Jesus tells a story that we sometimes call the story of the Good Samaritan, whose point is that the neighbor in the story is someone to whom the hearer is not ethnically related, someone who is from a different faith community and belief system and perspective, but whose actions, through the way that they treat those who are suffering, demonstrates true neighborliness. And as we gather to reflect on Muslim-Christian relations in the 21st century, we at the Interfaith Council deeply believe in asking ourselves that question constantly, who is my neighbor? And getting to know one another, to break down stereotypes that we have about each other, to learn from each other, and to build coalitions together so that the most vulnerable, the most marginalized, those in most desperate need of God's help receive it right here in our community, for they too are indeed our neighbors. On behalf of all of us at the IFC, I wish you blessings in this event, and I'm honored to be here and humbled to be here in the, the shadow of Reverend Dr. Clark Lobenstein and Rabbi Jerry Serrata, my predecessors at the Interfaith Conference, now Council. And again, my many and deep thanks to Masjid Muhammad for your faithfulness all of these many, many years of work and ministry together. Blessings to you all. Uh, all right. Thank, thank you, Reverend Lindsay. What we're going to do now is that we're going to have a pause for about, we're going to have a 10-minute break, and uh, Imam Talib's got the stopwatch going, so you only have 10 minutes. <laughs> we have some refreshments downstairs, and Sister Fitcher and her team are going to come, and we're going to prepare for the second part of our program. So you've got about 10 minutes, so go downstairs, refresh yourself, and come back ready for, to drink from the, the well that you've uh, been teased at with the appetizer up here today. Thank you. Yeah, also, the, the, the live streaming has just started as well, so we want to certainly continue to get moving. Uh, they're online around the world. We have several from around the world who have been tuning in to this. We have a very historic uh, presentation get ready to take place uh, in this next uh, hour that's getting ready to come up. So please uh, relieve yourselves, grab some refreshments, and come back and take your seat so we can get started right back in 10 minutes, less than 10 now. Thank you.
No, you can't have it. I mean, it's, it's going to be testing, testing, one, two, testing. So I can't, can't hear. Yeah, that's about it. People don't be too close when you got on the, on the microphone like that. So, so you need to turn the because yeah, you know, because people gonna have their notes. They don't want the thing covering their notes, so. So I need, I need it maybe turn it up. It's not gonna cause it to have feedback, is it? So that's that's that's, that's test the sensitivity from here. And see, go ahead, just uh, testing, 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 testing. Testing, 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 one, two, testing, 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 one, two. Testing, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three. Testing, 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 one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, 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 testing, one, two, three. Is it coming through? Mm. Okay. Testing, 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 one, two, testing, testing, one, two. Testing, testing, one, two, testing, testing, one, two. Testing, testing, one, two, three, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three. If you all can hear my voice, we want to go ahead and start getting settled down so we can go ahead and begin the uh, Second part of the program so we can get close to making up the time to be finished uh, in the next uh, hour and a half, uh, God willing. So if you can hear my voice, I know we're speaking, but if you can hear my voice, let's please start trying to make our way to sit down so we can uh, get to this historic portion of the program and, and uh, presentation, dynamic presentation. Testing, one, two, three. If you can hear my voice downstairs or upstairs, let's, let's take our, begin to take our seats, please. Uh, we do have an international audience uh, online on virtual waiting, uh, waiting for the program as well. So let's continue to move to our seats. Let's continue to move to our seats.
spot before we even get to the panel. We gotta have these speakers come up before we get to the panel. So this should be on right now. Uh, testing, 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 one, two, three. Okay, everybody come on, let's take our seats, please. Let's take our seats, please. <laughs> Uh, I okay, we get ready to transition uh, to the remaining uh, hour or so of the program. Uh, we do have an international audience uh, looking at this, viewing this right now, waiting that's online international audience are waiting for us to get back started so we can take our seats here everybody can take the seats and we know we have really a series of a few speakers coming up first and then we're going to have the panel uh, speakers and then the panel okay we have speakers coming up and then we have a panel Okay. Okay, live streaming uh, is on. The live streaming is on. So testing. Can everybody in the back hear? So are the speakers coming through? <clears throat> so we get ready to turn it over to Sister Fitra Muhammad. Who's going to bring up? Uh, we have a, a brief recitation, a brief recitation, translation, and then she'll make some comments, and then we'll follow her, and then we'll uh, move towards the very special historic portion of this, this, this program here. So, Sister Fitra. Greetings to everyone. Uh, we're going to start the program off first with prayer. Um, and the sister, Sister Bilal, will come up and recite from the Quran and make prayer before we get started. Peace be unto you. Um, honorable Imam Talib the esteemed committee of Masjid Muhammad, our esteemed guests, I greet you in the greetings of peace. Assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Um, I will, op my name is Sister Kim, and I'll open up with the Muslim prayer, the first chapter of Quran, entitled Al-Fatiha. Al-Fatiha means the opening. And then I'll recite that in Arabic and then translate it into English. And then I'll recite um, one verse of chapter 49, the inner chambers or the inner apartments in Arabic and English. It's not long at all, so inshallah. I will 
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا سراط المستقيم سراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. In in English that is with Allah God with His name the merciful benefactor the merciful redeemer. All praise is due to Allah the sustainer and cherisher of all the worlds, the Lord and creator of all systems of knowledge, most gracious, most merciful God, master and owner of the day of judgment. You alone, Allah, God, who we worship and you alone do we seek for help. Show us the straight path, the path of those upon whom you have bestowed your grace, those whose portion is not wrath, and those who go not astray. That's al Fatiha. Now I'll recite um, Surah Al Hujarat, that's chapter 49 in the Quran. One ayat, one verse. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناه وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم إن الله عليم قبير and that's in English O mankind O people, O oh humanity, O oh human beings. This is Allah speaking, God Almighty. Surely, verily, indeed, we created you all from a male and a female. And we made you all into tribes and nations for the purpose of and in order for you to know one another and not despise each other, to work in harmony with one another. Surely the most honorable of you in the sight of God are those who are God conscious, those who are obedient, and those who have right conscious, right conscious and right conduct. Surely God is all knowing, aware. Thank you. With Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. I bear witness that there is but one God, who in the Arabic language is called Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is Allah's last and final prophet. I greet you 
assalamu alaikum, which means peace and blessings be upon you. I need to put my glasses on. Bear with me. My name is Fitra Mohammed. One of my responsibilities is international representative here at Masjid Mohammed. But today I am speaking as a believing woman, mother, concerned for our nation. This masjid was built by the early followers, respectfully referred to as our pioneers under the leadership of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, known today as the community of Imam Wadufuddin Muhammad, may he be, may they both be in the highest place in paradise, and comprised of first, second, third, and fourth generation Muslims. The Quran, our holy book, the Bible and Torah read similarly. That which is for you cannot be taken, and that which is for you cannot be given. One reference is natural rights, freedom, justice, and equality, given to every human being at birth by the Creator. Yet history records the human family longing to realize a fair and free society beginning with the slaughtering of the Native Americans and the inconceivable cruelty committed against my African ancestors who were brought to this country chained, forced into servitude. 400 years later, we are still struggling to reclaim our inherent rights against those who want to obstruct and deny American citizens equal representation by restricting access to voting. How low can you go in acting a law that forbids an act of kindness, giving a person a bottle of water while standing in line to vote? Let freedom ring that through all the persecution that, that my people have endured, that all people have endured, they refuse to give up because oppressive conditions cannot be sustained. God is called by many names and in many languages, and he hears the cries of his servants. Everyone has an equal opportunity to know God in his or her unique cultural experience and permitted to worship without fear of harm to himself or doing harm to others. At the core of this indifference to human equality is the sin of xenophobia, described as chauvinism, racism, nationalism, prejudice, and the intolerance towards people of different hues, religion, and culture. All the prophets, peace be upon them, taught people to have faith and seek God's approval by behaving well towards each other, Mother Earth, and even animals, with thoughtfulness, appreciation, fairness, empathy, forgiveness, repentance, and yes, love. Taught people to have faith and believe in divine justice, that immoral acts draw God's wrath in this life. Taught people to have faith and believe in the day of judgment when one will not escape God's sentencing after death. The global human family is in need of religious leaders who will follow what their prophet taught, uphold the teachings inspired by God, and speak out with conviction, faith, and courage. 
The Bible warns sin will cause humans to make God in our likeness. Sin will cause humans to worship the created things rather than the creator. I will end with a reading from the Quran, Surah 103, translation by Yusuf Ali. By the token of time, through the ages, verily man is lost, except such as have faith and do righteous deeds and join together in the mutual teaching of truth and patience and constancy. On behalf of the Masjid Muhammad community, I welcome our speakers, our guests, and our viewers. And now I introduce you to Imam Talib Sharif, President of Masjid Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum, your sister and friend, Fitra Muhammad. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Again, that is with Almighty God's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. We want to thank our uh, dear sister Fitra Muhammad, and we also want to also thank our uh, dear sister Bilal uh, for the recitation. Testing, testing, one, two, testing, testing, one, two. Is it coming through? Say, Mike, it's still on. Testing, testing, one, two. Testing, testing, one, two. You can, you can turn the volume up. I think it's good on live stream, but in here we need to turn the volume up some. So let me know. Give me a thumbs up. We got a testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Is that better? Is it getting there? Testing one, two, three. Volume up. Okay, we're getting better. Okay, we're getting we're getting better. Okay, so again, we also want to welcome now. Also, we didn't have the live streaming. Uh, on the first part, which was the uh, press conference, which supposed to have been outside, uh, but we came inside, but now that we have a live audience, so just want to introduce ourselves again to those who are coming in to, for the first time uh, to hear us. Uh, we are at Masjid Muhammad again, the nation's mosque. Uh, this is a community that goes back to 85 years here in the nation's capital, which puts us about, uh, actually really started in 1935, but the community began forming in 1937 uh, right here. Uh, it was produced, it is a product of the struggle uh, in America to see the humanity free. Uh, again, the first house, for those who, again who are listening via the uh, live streaming, uh, this is the first house built in all of America by descendants of enslaved Africans. Uh, this is certainly an appropriate place because the interest was in freedom, justice, and equality. Uh, these were uh, people who have claimed inheritance. Uh, we look at the history books in America when they speak about the slaves that were brought here those who were enslaved, they say that there was a significant percentage uh, that were Muslims. Uh, some books say none were Christians. Uh, and then, of course, we know in the country, many of them slaves ended up becoming Christians. And I'm, I want to say this because it also makes it very appropriate for what's happening here, this alliance to be taking place at this historic facility uh, in that uh, from those who were Christians began really a significant, what we, I, I would say, conversion, a conversion uh, from Christianity uh, in America to Islam. Uh, and uh, so that tells us that there were families of those members who became Muslims who were not Muslims, who were of other faiths. Now that's very unique when we look at quote unquote the Muslim world uh, because most of, the, most of the Muslim world are predominantly a Muslim and they don't have family members and, and, and relatives and those kinds of things. Uh, that are not that are not Muslim, so it made them a little difficult. And of course, when some of the translations that came in English first came from "quote unquote" the Muslim world, said, "Don't take Christians and Jews to be your friend." Those were translations that came from a population uh, that had some bad experiences uh, with other faiths, and they began to put those translations to cause problems for us here in America. But because we had relationships. Uh, we were able to, and we were a thousand years from the scholars and here in America, the New Human Society were able to look at the Quran, uh, three man, Walter D. Muhammad, the son of Arnold Elijah Muhammad, as you heard of uh, uh, earlier. Uh, this community, being a, being a national community, uh, able to look in the Quran now, uh, not having teachers from overseas who were, who were damaged, who were hurt uh, because of those experiences, and we were able to look at the Quran. Uh, you many of you know that we say people of the book, but we know now from the Quran it, explaining itself, the word ahil means family. 
people, that's okay, but family is closer uh, to what that word is saying. So Almighty God is calling us family. Family, not just people. People you can have a tendency away, but family you think close. And that's what God wants us to get, uh, that we are uh, a family. And uh, so we are, we are our life, when you look at Malcolm, Malcolm X, uh, in fact, where I'm speaking from now, he used to be the leader here and speak from here. Uh, we also, the community of Muhammad Ali. So they had transition. They both had three significant stages in their life, uh, pre-Islam, uh, then of course that hybrid version of Islam, and then universal, universal. So we say that we've gone from small circles of self uh, and nationalism to broader circles of oneness and humanity upon universals, universals, universal teachings of Islam, and, 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 and et cetera. So when we look at, we look at how our Almighty God uh, has evolved things and where we are today, we, are, we, are, uh, we all occupy what we call shared freedom space. And this was something that was coined by Imam Walter D. Muhammad as well about this shared freedom space uh, in our nations and our worlds in this universal order. We call it a universal order. Now we know the word universe. Universe, universal, universal, it has in it uni. These are, these are small things for uni, meaning one, and verse. Verse meaning uh, communication, uh, meaning the message, uh, meaning something that should be read. So uni, universe. So the universe, the material world, the material world, this creation, this is one big book. One big book to be and should be, it should be read. And it's communicating, it's communicating one central theme. One central theme that this alliance is upon, that's at the core of this alliance. Though there are differences, there's, there's unity in, 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 that, in that differences. That one message is that the creator, the one that created all this, as the scientific mind has evolved and looked at the elements in the human body, looked at the elements out in space, and we know Almighty God sometimes allows uh, 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 matter from outside of space to come in land on earth, and they study that matter and find it's the same thing, so they say it's one. So they say the creator, that created all this is one, the creation is one, and it says that we who came out of the creation, this body that I'm in, uh, we know it goes right back to the earth when, we, when, we, when the spirit leaves it, then this goes right back to where it came from. Uh, so that means that we are one, one human family, one human family uh, under Almighty God, and that is the basis that's the basis for us coming together. Firstly, that's what God wants us, wants us to know. And although there are, many, there are many humans now, there are many humans now, about seven point something billion on the planet now, but many way before that, uh, there, there are no two types of human beings. There's only one human type. And again, the message is one, is promoting, promoting, promoting unity. But in observing the wisdom, the wisdom that Almighty God has put before us, the wisdom of a higher order, when we, when we look at that, we come to know that this creation, the creation now, it didn't start from unity, and it didn't start from order. Our scriptures, the Abrahamic faith, our scriptures tell us that it started from noise, confusion, commotion, chaos. Uh, some have the term before commotion, violent commotion. And then it says that the one that created it, he didn't want it to stay like that, so he willed, he willed order, and he willed unity to come into that matter. And he said, come together willingly or unwillingly. And again, this is something that we share as a faith community, as Abrahamic communities. And we know the creation, the creation replied, we come willingly. Now, we should all know that the creation that was here way before us, Earth in itself is 4.6 billion years old. But the human, as we know it, is way shorter than in terms of, terms of distance. But we came out of that matter that willingly obeyed Almighty God. And that's to tell us that the nature, the nature that God put in us doesn't want us to go against his will. If we go against his will, we're going against our own nature. That's what that's telling us when God said it came willingly. So upon the creator's will, order and unity came into the chaos. Everything received its attention. Everything began to receive its respect. Uh, they were given their place in the beautiful picture of the universe and was given its freedom. Freedom to have this existence. Uh, freedom to have its function in the whole picture. And only after that order and unity was established, there was peace. There was peace in the heavens. Therein, my respected brothers and sisters, is a universal logic for human life and progress. Almighty God, the creator, is giving us a picture of what should and must be done on this earth. And we see in this relationship now, this alliance that is starting, 
this coming together upon peace, peace. And we have to respect each other. And we know when we respect each other, we respect ourselves, we respect differences, but then Almighty God begins to establish some sense of cooperation. And, and the same God that brought peace to the heavens, that we, we, we're speaking about, that massive body uh, that was not at peace can bring peace certainly to our nations, certainly can bring peace to our souls, and really peace, peace is the hope of every uh, human soul. After all, we just said that the matter that we came out of achieved peace. So it makes it easy for us if we follow the order that God put in place for us. Adam, as we get ready to close, Adam, Adam when he was created, and again, we are here with Abrahamic faiths. Abrahamic faiths. There are others. They may use a different name, other faiths, of the one who was first. But Adam, Adam, when he was created, his nature, his nature uh, was upon the peace he received from the earth. And we know that Adam, uh, he is recognized as the first human. So we know that from him, humanity is one, and we share a common identity, a common identity that dates back to Adam. And when he was created, he didn't have a racial identity. How could he? He didn't have an ethnic identity. How could he? He didn't have a national identity. How could he? And right now, part of what's happening now is that identities are being weaponized. Identities are being weaponized. But we see how Almighty God, when he established us, we didn't have any of these identities. We had just the one identity that Adam had that was given, the first identity. And it has to be the most important identity because it was the first identity given by the one that created the human being, and that was human first. And Almighty God is telling us that from that identity came the many beautiful, wonderful, diverse expressions of human life. All from Adam and all have contributed to the beauty and strength of our nations and of our world. And God has said if we focus on that identity first, which this alliance is focusing on, this alliance focus on that identity. You hear humanitarian Islam, human, human, humanitarian Islam. It's focusing on that identity first, and God is saying if you focus on that identity first, that identity is strong enough now to support all the other identities that are at each other, that we are seeing at each other across the globe uh, right now. And again, this is, we, we, are, we are against weaponizing identity. God lets us know, look, the, the truth of the matter is when a, when, a, when, a, when, a, when a baby is born, all babies are born upon universals, no matter their race, no matter their nationality, no matter their ethnicity. They are all born upon, upon universals. They come here human first. All of us, regardless of our race now, we came here human first. We were unaware, even though we were born to a family of a certain race, nationality, ethnic, we, didn't, we weren't aware of that. We come to that knowledge later. Human first. Universal language. Universal communication. And Almighty God, another, another wisdom from the higher authority is regardless of your identities that come after human identity, in the universal picture, in the state of nature, the mother, Almighty God, has put the food right where she wants to hold the new life, regardless of the race. This is the human picture. In fact, we know in, in uh, sister faith, uh, more so than any other faith, uh, Christianity, there's a picture of a mother and a child. And often you will see that child right by the heart. Right by the heart. Now that, that picture takes us to where this alliance has as its foundation. That is a picture of compassion. That is a picture of love. And we know that the, the WEA, World Evangelical Alliance, has as its root. And we know Jesus said, we know, I leave one commandment, that you love one another. That you love one another. And the woman, the woman, the womb of the woman is called uh, Rahim. Rahim. Now you, in the doctrine, in the doctrine, and in the books that you see that's going to be presented today, uh, you'll hear this, you'll see the word Rahmat. Now you heard us open up with uh, Ar-Rahman, Nirahim, twice. The same thing, speaking to compassion and mercy. But God associates that with, with the mother. This community of Indonesia, the largest Muslim uh, organization, the largest group of Muslims in the world, uh, right now are at the foundation of human life. And they have connected uh, with this community here in America, a community in this new human society, they have struggled to see its identity free. 
and, and we have found our brothers. We used to have a newspaper in the movement that had our hands reaching across the globe. That's now have become a, it wasn't a reality at that time, but it's now have become a reality. And not only, not only speaking of Muslims, we've also are connecting with our Christian brothers and sisters who are in over 140 countries, uh, uh, the, uh, the WEA. And they have a heavy presence in Africa, heavy presence in Africa. Uh, so this is a very appropriate place uh, for this alliance uh, and, and to be launched. Uh, we they have a statement that has been produced uh, from here, and we are asking you all to see that statement, read that statement, and embrace that statement and become a part of that. Uh, you'll see that in a few minutes. Uh, and um, it's taking place here at this location in America's capital city of Washington, D.C. Uh, so with that, we want to say that we ask Almighty God to bless us, to bless this movement, to bless this alignment, alli alliance, uh, which is really an invitation for us to embrace our shared identity as humans first and, and to value our intrinsic nature to live together, to coexist, to live together intelligently. Intelligently. As, as I mentioned earlier, the timing of this event uh, could not have been also something of a message from Almighty God. We didn't know it was going to be doing the, the period of the hearts, the pilgrimage, this thing that focuses on all of humanity, the foundation of human life and legacy of Abraham, this divine communication. It lets us know that the natural order, the natural order, as we've been about, the natural order of life is driving us. And they're not going against the waves. This alliance is not going, it's driving us to work together, to be aware of, to help, and to care for one another. So as we close, we pray for Almighty God to create his help in sustaining this alliance, this relationship, to, re to sustaining our resilience, our patience, our strength, and also the inherent goodness as we turn towards each other in the spirit of universal kinship. So with that, now we want to bring up, uh, and we have, a, uh, we have an order after this, we're going to bring up, uh, I think Thomas is coming next, right? Right. We're going to have our dear brother, Dr. Dr. Thomas to come up. <clears throat> and after Dr. Thomas, he's going to make some very wonderful comments. He's the envoy. He was mentioned earlier. Uh, he is the uh, World Evangelical Alliance uh, special envoy uh, to the humanitarian uh, Islam. And then after him, he's going to bring up the general secretary who you heard from earlier. Uh, and then we're going get, to get ready to get set up for a very special presentation uh, that he mentioned uh, to our archbishop uh, in, in, in congratulating him. So if we turn it over now. To our dear Dr. Thomas. Thank you. Well, thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Uh, I would bring you greetings from the, the World Evangelical Alliance and the hundreds of millions of Christians whom we try to represent. May God's peace be upon you. About two and a half years ago, I began corresponding with C. Holland Taylor and with Pakyaya Stakov. We were talking about the relationships between Islam and Christianity. We were talking about the need for a new pattern of relationships. We were talking about forming a group of scholars to get together. And then on Easter 2019, there was the terrible bombing of three of some churches and some hotels in Sri Lanka. And in the following days, as I was corresponding with our Muslim friends, it became evident that they, they were absolutely appalled at what had happened. They were appalled that people who claimed to be followers of their religion had done something like this, and they wanted the Christian world to know that real Muslims, such as themselves, did not want to do that kind of thing. In fact, that they systematically rejected the use of violence on behalf of Islam. Well, as it happened that about a week after Easter, on a Sunday morning, I believe it was exactly a week after Easter, on a Sunday morning, I received, an, I read an email from Holland Taylor that said, the clock is ticking. And as I went to church that Sunday morning and as I was praying during the worship service, I realized, okay, it's time to do something to try to change the course of Muslim-Christian relationships. And maybe, just maybe, we have the people here who might be able to begin to do that. I then contacted my, the man who was then our department head in the World Evangelical Alliance, Thomas Schermacher, 
and he agreed, yes, this seems to be important. We should make every effort to develop a relationship to cooperate with the Indonesian humanitarian Muslims. So that was a change, but we should keep that in contrast with an event, an early event from some 1400 years ago that has characterized Muslim-Christian relationships. That's, I'm thinking of the Battle of Yarmouk, which may not be familiar to many of you, but in the Battle of Yarmouk in August of 636, almost 1400 years ago, there was an important battle between Christian and Muslim armies. And probably over 50,000 soldiers died in a six-day battle, an atrocity that shocks us today. And yet, even though that was an event from 1400 years ago, yet today, many people, none of them here I suppose, take that as the model for how Christians and Muslims should relate. There has been centuries of jihads and responding crusades back and forth. And we know that there are still some people who think that way. People, the people who caused 9-11 or the continuing conflicts in the Western Sahel, that the age of crusades and jihads is not 100% past. It is time to set a very new and conscious different direction. That's why we're talking about God needs no defense. When we say God needs no defense, we mean God needs no military defense. But what may be appropriate for us as Christians and Muslims together is a very high degree of literary and theological engagement with each other. Instead of a military defense, we need a literary and theological engagement with each other. We talk about life together in society with different religions. Uh, and why should we do that? The reason we should do that is that the future does not have to be exactly the same as the past. We can imagine a new future. We don't have to follow the past into a way of jihads and crusades. We can, perhaps with the grace of God, figure out a new way that Christians and Muslims can live together. Now. We, among us here, probably all of us, have people who are friends from the other religion, among Christians and Muslims. And we know that our grandchildren are going to be neighbors in the future. They will be Christian and Muslim who live in the same neighborhoods as neighbors, and those are our grandchildren. This will be on a global scale. We have here in this room today people from several continents almost around the world, even though we're a small group. Our grandchildren will be neighbors. And it wouldn't be nice if they would be good neighbors as Christians and as Muslims. Now, there are real differences between Islam and Christianity. They are, as I would suggest, irreducible. We have different truth claims. But nevertheless, there's a very lot that we say about how we should live that is remarkably similar. And we have found this out by two years of very hard theological discussion with our friends from Indonesia. We have talked about an astonishing array of theological questions together, Muslims and Christians together, really debating it's been very stimulating. But out of that, there f it's been clear that we really agree on some very foundational issues about how we should live in society. Together, we can say we know that we should do unto others as we want them to do unto you. Together, we know we should love our neighbors as ourselves. Together, we know that we believe in human dignity, in a God-given human dignity that comes before anything that any state or nation says or does. Together, we recognize that there is a universal God-given moral law that's built into the fabric of creation, into the fabric of our lives, and that's at the foundation of conscience and moral reason. Together, we know that there are many vulnerable dimensions of our existence that need to be protected. Life itself, learning, rationality, communities of faith, family, and marriage. We know that they're vulnerable and need special protection. 
So there are many areas about life together in which we know now that Muslims and Christians can really agree at a deep level that even if we cannot ch share our religions or join our religions, we can, share, we can live together as good neighbors and we have the principles to do so. So that's why I'm very glad that uh, Thomas Schermacher was elected as our uh, Secretary General in the World Evangelical Alliance because he has, in the Christian world, been promoting this discussion for a long time. So I'm very pleased that we have this opportunity to talk about the, these things while we also re release a book that's in his honor. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thomas Johnson. Now, now we want to bring up the General Secretary, uh, dear brother, Pak Yahya of Natal Ulama Supreme Council, the largest Muslim organization in the world. And he'll lead us into a special presentation. You want to come here or you want to do it from here? Now we come to the uh, main purpose of uh, this whole event, which is to honor the General Secretary of WEA World Evangelical Alliance, Dr. Thomas Schirmacher. And for that, we already created a book which is a uh, compilation of fundamental writings from the uh, scholars and leaders of WEA and Nahdlatul Ulama that will be uh, will mark the beginning of our joint endeavor between the global movement of humanitarian Islam and world Evangelical Alliance. Dr. Thomas Schirmacher, please receive this book in honor of you. Okay, yeah, thank you very much for this honor. You are quite sure that you understand that I want to give all honor to God <laughs> and not to myself. And my friend said, my friend said that it's God who brings us in the world and uh, we are all created evil by him, equal by him. And so, looking back in my life, I don't have the impression that I run the show, but that God is so gracious to use us. Um, and uh, I want to, if, I allow, if you allow me for one minute, um, to thank three people that played a major role in my, um, my history here. Uh, one is Dr. Monty Wilson, who is sitting there, over there. Um, he represents the um, uh, uh, Aid for Starving Children, Children's Hunger Relief Fund, uh, and the German organization Giving Hands. And I'm grateful that they have financed most of the things I've done in the last uh, two decades with a real vision into the, that, that those strategies, and you know, this all involved a lot of travel, a lot of writing, a lot of those things, and you can't do this without people who are dedicated to find out this. So thank you very much, Monty, for being here. Um, uh, Diop, uh, I thank you. He is the secretary for the, what is called the Secretary of Christian World Communions. And I learned to make peace through friendships among the Christian churches first. Um, and he represents this uh, global community of secretaries of Christian world communions that goes from the Catholic Church, Orthodox churches, to the Salvation Army and the Quakers. And uh, this body that meets once a year um, is, uh, has, has been a place where behind closed doors we have could discussed 
could discuss a lot of deep differences of our convictions. And believe it or not, it's not only between Muslims and Christians, yeah? And it's not only within Islam that there's a lot of discussion that is still necessary, but the same is true within Christianity, and he is the symbol for this. He's also the uh, General Secretary of the International Association for Religious Liberty. So uh, this binds us together. Thank you for being here. And, um, um, and uh, His Royal Highness Prince Garios of Gassan uh, is here. He actually resides in the moment in the US but his history goes back many, many centuries, representing the royal houses and families that uh, ruled uh, the Middle East at some times. And of course, his royal house is still very much related to all the other royal houses around. It's a bit confusing for me sometimes, which nieces have married which uncles and so on. Yeah. And, um, but uh, we have been a lot together in, in the MENA region and um, we both are involved in what is called the Global uh, Count, uh, Imams Council. Um, and uh, I learned a lot there how to build friendships between Muslim and Christians in, in an area of the world where it is desperately needed that the religious leaders find peace. And we visited together several times the Ecumenical Patriarchate in Istanbul because his pre 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 predecessor 1800 years ago installed his grand 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 I don't know father um, as, as the first king. And uh, this, this is an, an area uh, of history where both our religions come from. And I'm, I eagerly want to work not only to bring peace to Gambia and Indonesia, but also back to the historic places where our religion started to prove that uh, we, we can live peacefully together. And so I thank you for being here too. Congratulations, Archbishop. That's my congratulations. In fact, you just mentioned uh, Prince Gregorius, so we're going to ask you to come up and make comments and also this is again a special day uh, honoring uh, our Archbishop and uh, we have another presentation I want we want to hear uh, comments uh, from Prince, so Thank you. Hello. Greetings to all. Salam Alaikum to all my brothers and sisters in Islam. I'm Christian, I represent the oldest Christian dynasty in the world, the oldest Arab dynasty, and um, I consider myself a human being because all of us here with different religions, before anything we were humans. And I think that should be the approach. As uh, Reverend said very wisely, as a Christian myself, I have a very uncomfortable duty, which is love my neighbor. And because loving God is compared to loving the neighbor is relatively easy. God created us, great father, it's okay. But loving the neighbor when the neighbor is different than us, when things different, especially the days we're living today, a division where everything is emotional, everything is us against them. And it's a very, it's a very hard task. And um, I believe that if we connect to the things that we agree, and I believe that Muslims, all religious people, we agree maybe in 80%, 90%. We just want to be happy and raise our kids. So why we are fighting for the 10, 20% we disagree is not even smart. So I ask you all to reflect today uh, what really means to be a Christian, what really means to be a Muslim or a Buddhist or a, a Jew is the different clothing we wear, the different temples we frequent, or who we really are, our relationship with God. So I think that that way would be easier for us to live together because no matter what, we have to live together in the best possible way, preferably without killing each other. And I think that's the main mission. And 
with Archbishop Shemaher, um, he is, in my opinion, one of the greatest religious leaders in the world, one of the greatest fighters for, uh, literally, he's one of the... And I have the privilege of being his friend, and I asked permission to his wife to make the statement. She said, it's, it's okay. And one of the best memories I have is talking for a few hours in their kitchen about the Middle East and, and I mean we as Shakespeare said in the in Her Her the, or the Fifth, the Battle of Angikot, the one who shed his blood with me shall be my brother. And I consider Archbishop Shimaher as my brother because we've been, as he said, all over. So I would like to make a humble homage, a tribute to him. Um, thanking him for all the support because you may not believe because he looks younger but I'm younger than him so he is like a very special figure to me and as Sir Isaac Newton said if I've seen further it's because I was sitting on the shoulder of a giant and he is again literally a giant so I want to give him the highest and his wife too please Dr. Christine approach because I want to promote both of you to the rank of Knight and then Grand Caller of the Order of the Archangel Michael. We are still making the colors. This was like a surprise that they were coming. So this represents the colors they will be receiving soon. So. He came prepared with the, the old one. Congratulations and thank you so much. Thank you so much for to having me. Thank you. round of applause please that was that was a uh and if you look at how beautiful and natural uh, this just took place you know as an impromptu here uh, in this historic mosque honoring one of my dear progressive resourceful Christian leaders thank you thank you I'm glad it worked out Prince thank you for being here really appreciate the comments we want to hear more about our honoree. I'm going to bring up uh, one of my working now. So thank you, Rabbi. <laughs> Greatly appreciate it.
Whoops. That was a mistake. What an honor to be here in this historic mosque. Um, in the short time that I have on this program, I would far exceed my allotted time if I simply read Bishop Dr. Thomas Sherman. And even less would I have time to complete a reading of the titles of his over 100 books he has published, even if I could get away with pretending to pronounce the titles in the 18 languages into which they have been translated. So I'll focus on an interfaith perspective on three aspects of his remarkable career most relevant to this beautiful fesh rift from such respected scholars and or relevant to the urgent responsibilities he will now assume as the Secretary General CEO of the World Evangelical Alliance. The first is Bishop Schermacher's abiding commitment to religious freedom. We see alarming escalation of religious persecution, oppression, discrimination, infringing on the most fundamental expressions of people's conscience, humanity, and belief in the divine. And since every religion and religious grouping, including Muslims and evangelicals, are represented as minorities somewhere on earth, every religion is affected by this persecution. And, uh, and in too many cases, this is happening with alarming urgency. In my travels to over 80 nations, I've seen clearly how Muslims and evangelicals have been subject to persecution. Evangelicals in very countries across the globe, including some Muslim countries, making this book so timely and so vitally needed. Secondly, the bishop's commitment to individual salvation and to evangelism is powerfully complemented by his abiding commitment to social and societal justice, societal compassion, and empathy. It infuses his concern for the poor within our communities on a global level. It infuses his concern for our responsibility to protect God's creation for all God's children, both today's children and the children of generations yet to come, which I would argue is one of religion's great contributions to ethical thinking in the world. And it infuses its commitment ensuring that all, rich and poor, men and women, Christians and non-Christians, can fulfill their God-given potential. And the third is the bishop's abiding commitment to interfaith dialogue, understanding and cooperation in general and between Muslims um, and evangelicals. And that relationship between the two, I think as everyone knows, is also uh, has been a focus of some of Christine's um, respected and influential uh, scholarship as well. That Islam and evangelism, numerically two of the three largest expressions of religious faith on earth, are in recent years shaping a dialogue represented so richly and insightfully in this Fesherist's essays is testimony to the inspiring impact this servant of God has who will soon assume such vital leadership of the World Evangelical Alliance, the impact that he has had on so many, so many Christians, and so many non-Christians. And the book is an achievement that is not only a reflection of NU's generosity of spirit, generosity of resources, it is also a reflection of their commitment to religious tolerance and understanding. Dr. Schermacher's interfaith efforts, of course, are perhaps best known for his tireless role helping to lead a five-year process resulting in the first ever joint statement by the Vatican's Pontifical Council for Interreligious Dialogue, the World Council of Churches, and the World Evangelical Alliance on World Mission and Human Rights. Look, we all sense that this generation will be seen as a crossroads in human history. This moment of history requires religious leaders a vision 
leaders of theological depth, not only to address the needs of her or his own followers, but to engage as an equal with great thinkers of other faiths, leaders with organizational and managerial skills, leaders who can adapt to new times, addressing new challenges and new fears, leaders who are at once great thinkers, writers, and teachers. Blessed as I've been to have been chosen to serve in 2019 and 2020 as the president of my own international denomination, I can tell you that finding so many varied leaders so as to accumulate such needed skills is a challenge that every denomination faith group and religious organization faces. That WEA has found all of these varied leaders in one remarkable pastor is something truly extraordinary. It is a blessing for evangelicals, even while it is a blessing for all of us who engage with this vital community. I've been told that German newspapers have referred to Thomas Schirmacher as one of the three leading experts on religious freedom globally and Pope Francis's most loved Protestant. Quite a compliment, but it doesn't surprise me. In our gathering here today with the bishop and the wonderful testimonials uh, represented by the scholarly essays of the Fresh Fresh Shrift are another affirmation that Thomas Schirmacher is so greatly admired and appreciated not only by popes and imams, but by all of us as well. So thank you, Bishop. Thank you for your visionary leadership and your journey that has brought you here today. In the words of the Jewish tradition, my friends, may you go, mechayel lechayel, from strength to strength, not only for these next five years of WE leadership, but for so many years to come. Just remember, Moses didn't even begin his journey of leadership until he was 80. Bless you. <laughs> Thank you, Rabbi Saperstein. Now the family of Abraham is complete. Thank you. Okay, and we're gonna now turn the program over uh, to our dear friend. Also, he's in, in, in an ambassador role as well. He's the co-chair of Humanitarian Islam. Uh, he's also with the working group of the World Evangelical uh, Alliance. And uh, he's gonna also take us to this statement uh, that we have over here. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over now uh, to our dear brother, Holland Taylor. Thank you very much, Imam. Right. For those of you in the audience here and also uh, witnessing this event by live stream, I might speak for just a few moments about this book, uh, God Needs No Defense. In Indonesia, this phrase, Tuhan Tak Perlu Dibela, is famous. You can speak to those words to almost any Indonesian, they will recognize those words as the words of Kai Haji Abdurrahman Wahid, the longtime chairman of Nadlatu Ulama, the man who brought democracy to Indonesia, the man whose life uh, set a course for modern Indonesia, which sets it apart from Libya, from Yemen, from Egypt, from Syria, from so many parts of the world, Pakistan, uh, just speaking objectively, where democracy faces so many challenges. Indonesian democracy is not perfect. American democracy is not perfect. But Indonesian democracy is what it is because of the founding fathers of Indonesia, which included the leadership of Nadlatu Ulama, and because of Abdurrahman Wahid. So he published an article in Oxford University Press in a book on apostasy and blasphemy laws. One of the co-authors is here with us today, Paul Marshall, Nina Shea is another, from Hudson Institute. And when we decided to publish a festschrift in honor of Dr. Thomas Schirmacher's appointment as General Secretary and CEO of the World Evangelical Alliance, we could think of no title more appropriate than God Needs No Defense, 
subtitle, as Imam Talib Sharif has said, Reimagining Muslim-Christian Relations in the 21st Century. Um, there are copies for those of you who are physically here in the back of the room and some boxes in the back. Please feel free to take a copy with you. Also for those who are live streaming as a website, it may be difficult for those who do not speak Arabic, but www.baitarrahma, B-A-Y-T-A-R r-a-h-m-a-h dot o-r-g, you can get a PDF copy for free on the Baita Rahma website. Now the reason, one of the reasons this book is so significant, just to cite one reason, uh, the Nadatu Ulama is the world's largest Muslim organization. They were founded in 1926 when Kai Haji Hashim Ashari gave the foundational speech for Nadatu Ulama in Surabaya in East Java. This was at the time of Dutch colonialism. Uh, he gave a speech which became the foundational text of Nadu to Ulama. And to this day, it's called Mukadima uh, Kanun Asasi. It's never been translated into English before, as far as we can tell. It's never been published in English before. Uh, the core element of that speech appears in this text. And I would strongly urge everyone here and everyone listening to read that speech because Almost 100 years ago, Kai Haji Hashim Ashari, who was President Wahid's grandfather, he analyzed how societies are destroyed. This gathering here today is operationalizing the formula that Kai Haji Ashari laid out for how great societies are built and how they can be sustained. And it basically comes down to unity, as our brother uh, Imam Talib Sharif indicated. And unity, which is based on our fundamental shared humanity, unity based on shared humanitarian and civilizational values, humanity, um, unity which emerges from our God-given nature where we can make a choice. And we can make a choice to act from conscience, and when we act from conscience, then we can follow God's will. And we believe, all of us here gathered today at this table, and we believe all of us today in this room, we believe that if we all act according to our true conscience, not our selfishness, not the whispering of Satan, as someone might say, but act on our conscience, that there is no inherent conflict because we should each be able to feel God's will as it whispers to us in the silent depths of our heart. So in addition to this uh, foundational essay by Kahaji Hashim Ashari, um, there are also two essays by President Wahid. Laying out one of them, this essay, the title essay of the book, God Needs No Defense, is a Muslim theological defense of freedom of religion that President Wahid published uh, with Oxford University Press. A second entitled Rahma, uh, which uh, President Wahid laid out, Rahma, that is universal love and compassion is the primary message of Islam. And at this point, I must say that for us, from Nadla to Ulama, for us, when we met Imam Talib Sharif and Albert Sabir from this mosque and Imam Talib's uncle Abdul, Abdul Rahman from the mosque in Wilmington, North Carolina, it was so touching for us when they came to Indonesia in 2018. And this is why we're here today. Um, they came to Indonesia in 2018 to a major event at which Pak Yahya and the Nadatu Ulama set in motion a theological process which in 2019 led the Nadatu Ulama to abolish the legal category of infidel within the modern nation state. And if you don't have an infidel, from a legal category perspective, how can you restrict people's religious freedom? If you don't have the category of infidel, how can you have offensive warfare against people that you wish to annihilate or, or subordinate to your idea of God's dictates? So Nala to Ulama is a, nearly a century old. Um, it's facing its second century coming up, and the founders of Nala to Ulama and their leaders have preserved Indonesian civilization, Indonesian Islamic civilization for a hundred years. Uh, those interested in what that consists of are welcome to read in this book and accompanying articles by key figures from the World Evangelical Alliance. But then, Pa'yaya Holil Stakov, who is here, is working with other key leaders within Nadu to Ulama in order to lay out the framework for the second century of Nadu to Ulama. And a key element of this is our partnership with the World Evangelical Alliance, our partnership with the Nation's Mosque and the W. Dean Muhammad community. We're going to try to keep the last section of this event short because uh, we're running up against uh, an edge, uh, the edge of time, and also we know that there'll be the evening prayers later here. Um, but I just want to say, in terms of the W. Dean Muhammad community and the nation's mosque, um, 
This is a miraculous community. And this is from the perspective, actually I will ask Pat Yai in a moment to give his perspective on this matter, but uh, what we see within this community is a manifestation of Rahma, a manifestation of God's universal love and grace and compassion. They were so kind and uh, loving in Indonesia. They've been kind and loving to us here. We know the history. Imam Talib is from Wilmington, North Carolina. I'm from North Carolina. We know the history. There's not an African American in this room who does not know from their own genetic and family experience the legacy of slavery in America. But what we have encountered with this community is a spirit of kindness and forgiveness which shows greatness of soul, which shows the greatness of the Islam that you have embraced, and which offers a model for humanity as to how the world can move forward in reconciliation and forgiveness for the transgressions of the past and rather inspire others to rise to what we call the highest common denominator of our religions, of our respective civilizations. And so I just want to give a special thanks to Imam Talib, to Sister Fitra, to all of our brothers and sisters from the Masjid Muhammad. Before I read the nation's mosque statement, uh, Imam Talib mentioned that uh, there's an alliance. He used the term alliance several times. But before I go to that, actually, if I may, Pat Yaya, if, if I could, I think it would be relevant and appropriate if you would just give your view about the W. Dean Muhammad community and their role in America, their role in world Islam. I think that because we think a lot about this in Indonesia. We think a lot about your community, and I'd like to hear from Pat Yaya, your thoughts on this, Pat Yaya, before we read the nation's mosque statement and close the program. Thank you. <clears throat> in 2015, we uh, create an expression that we claim as uh, representing the nature of our religious cultural identity in Indonesia. It was Islam Nusantara. So we identify ourselves as Islam Nusantara. Nusantara means the East Indies. Archipelago. So Islam Nusantara is the Islamic civilization that grows in Nusantara, in the East Indies Archipelago. Now, it is a rather complex uh, concept, but the leader of Nadat Ulama in 2015, the chairman of our uh, Supreme Council, which was Kiai Haji Ahmad Mustafa Bishri, made a quite simple uh, explanation about this. Islam Nusantara means that we are Indonesians who are happen to embrace Islam. We are not Muslims who are happen to live in Indonesia, but we are Indonesians who embrace Islam. Now, when we encounter our brothers and sisters in the community of uh, uh, followers of W. Din Muhammad, we are seeing them like a uh, uh, the other side of the mirror in America. We are seeing them as Americans, the true Americans, who embrace Islam. Islam does not change their nature as Americans. Islam inspires them to behave to be a better Americans. And that is uh, what we idealize uh, for Islam to function. I think that is uh, uh, what, we, what I can say. In a, I, I would want to uh, make a long, long word about, about this uh, <laughs> community because I adore this community. I love our brothers and sisters here, but 
uh, that that was the, the the shortest you know explanation uh, expression that I can make you know about how I feel about uh, about this uh, community. Thank you. Um, we have a new party in Germany that thinks that all Muslims should leave Germany. And I want to give you some very private information why I, I'm not voting for them. Number one, it was a Turk, a Turkish couple that found the vaccination against COVID-19 in a German company. So if we would have kicked him out, probably he would not done the, have, have done the same research in, uh, in, 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 in Turkey. My, the doctor who did my uh, operation on my whole, whole head a year ago, I found the time because of COVID-19 to go to him, have him check. He did two surgeries so that I feel much more healthy today than I did five years ago is from Iran. So I'm happy that we did not kick him out. And my ice doctor, a world famous doctor, people from all over the world come here. Uh, I would not be able to read nowadays if he would not have done three operations. And by the way, it's true for my wife too. Yeah? He is from Turkey again. So if we would have kicked all the Muslims out, he would not have been there and I would be near to blind today. But there is a secret which I, I don't know whether I ever told it publicly why I never believed what some people try to tell me that all Muslims hate other people, all Muslims are, are, are friendly and that compassion is a typical Christian thing which Muslims do not know. I was a small boy and we were on vacation in Scotland um, and we did a day trip on a boat to Glasgow with a, with a whole group and believe it or not when we went back my parents thought I'm on the boat and I was not on the boat. So suddenly I found myself in Glasgow har Harbor without knowing anyone. And I was totally lost. People do not believe it because they think you should have taken your cell phone. They didn't exist by then. <laughs> yeah, so I was sitting there and, and weeping and a small black boy came along, my age ask what is what what is happening um, I I don't recall from which African countries they came but he took me to his family he said you can stay with us overnight and uh, my parents will know what to do so I got to this African Muslim family to find out it was a small room which just fit the parents and six or seven siblings yeah? And they put me in the middle. I never have been sleeping any night in my life more closely to other people again than in this night. Yeah? The problem was they really didn't have anything and they also did not have something to eat. Yeah? And somehow they went off and found something to eat. Probably knowing this looking backwards, they probably asked somebody for credit. Um, and probably it took some time until they paid this off again. Yeah, so. And then the next morning, the parents went with, with me to the next police station, and I knew the place where my parents were, and so there and so on. Yeah, but, but this very early experience, that it was not adults that helped me, that it was not um, the white people around that helped me. We were not alone there. I mean, there, there was a lot of people around. Um, but this small boy of my age, who had the wrong color, the wrong religion, but for me it's a bit s similar to uh, the Good Samaritan. He was the one that looked after me. And ever since, I was immune against racism and any kind of phobia against this and that, and that people tell me, this is how people really are. This is how Muslims are, this is how Jews are, this is how uh, rich people, poor people. And um, God, God taught me something this very minute. Um, it's the people 
people can be absolutely poor and have nothing and still give you something out of nothing. And there might be rich people who don't care for you. Yeah? And um, so that's, that's, that's really secret going deep back into my own history where God very early uh, taught me that it doesn't make sense to follow those official subscription, how people really are, and I know them, and they are in this box, yeah? Uh, this, this, this family, this boy, and this family, uh, they taught me that every human being is able to have compassions with others, yeah? And if we go this for this, and if we have compassions for others, um, then we can build up a peaceful, a just world, we can survive. And then in this situation, it's time to go for deep theological discussions, but not the other way around. If we want to start with discussions and wait until we have one, and only then want to help the others, this is not in any of our religions. In all our religions, yeah? I mean, in, in the New Testament, you have a very simple, how can you say that you love God? If you meet someone who has nothing to eat, how you can tell, say, I love God, and not give him something to eat. If you don't give him something to eat, he is the image of God. You are allowing the image of God to die. To die. How in the world can you then say, I love God? Yeah? And that's still deep in my heart, this small story, and I'm very thankful to God that he taught this to me very early, and I have a lot of pity, a lot of pity with people who never experience something like this. And sometimes experience is the better theology. If you realize how people can be who have nothing and yet have everything because they have compassions for others. Thank you. So we'll close out uh, today's event uh, by reading and then Imam Talib may invite uh, people to sign uh, a statement. It was called the Nation's Mosque Statement. A little background on this. In 2018, Imam Talib and two of his uh, fellow believers uh, from the W. Dean Muhammad community came to Indonesia. We created a 40-page theological document that was called the Nusantara Manifesto, which laid the foundation for a subsequent theological document through which Nada to Ulama at a gathering, a national conference of 20,000 ulama, 20,000 Muslim scholars in Indonesia belong to Nada to Ulama, uh, adopted this ruling uh, abolishing the legal category of kafir, ruling that it had no relevance in a modern nation state. Uh, the first step, in, uh, an early step in that process, Imam Talib witnessed in Jogjakarta, Indonesia, because we created a 40 page theological document laying out a framework for how the world has changed over the past thousand years, necessitating this type of uh, reform, we, we call it recontextualization of a certain element of Islamic orthodoxy. Um, but then we took the entire 40-page document, uh, which was a theological document, boiled it down to one sentence that we called the Nusantara Statement. And I still to this day remember Imam Talib with Kiai Haji Mustafa Bisri that Pat Yaya was citing earlier, uh, signing that document in Jogjakarta, Indonesia. And uh, actually, if I may, Imam Talib, just before we sign this, I would like one thing, if I could get your view on Indonesia and the Nadatu Ulama and why we're here today from your perspective. Actually, I'm just realizing I wanted to ask you that today, if I may. Th thank you, Holland. I really appreciate that. Uh, we were very well received. The delegation uh, from America that was mentioned, Holland mentioned that delegation. And of course, looking at, looking at Indonesia, how it has evolved, and look at where we are today in 2021, but you heard the history of this organization from 1926 on up to where it's at now. When we went to the country, we, we saw something, we were able to travel the country, and we saw things in Indonesia from, from this organization uh, also across the country that we didn't see in other Muslim countries. There are many Muslim countries, I know some are listening uh, to now to what I'm saying here, uh, but we have a lot of declarations, uh, but a lot of those declarations are not consistent to what we are seeing in those societies. Uh, but obviously they're correct declarations. You know, Muslims have to agree to these things, but this is part of Islamic history. 
And, uh, but in Indonesia, the statement, the New Santata statement, uh, that statement is consistent uh, to what we see in the society and is certainly at the center of this uh, organization uh, in you, uh, Natala Uliman. Uh, and we want to we wanna thank uh, uh, our brother, our brother Pak Yaya. Uh, he's so insightful. Uh, he's, he travels often. And we are, it is our hope that this event will bring more attention to a society where we do see Islam, modern Islam, humanitarian Islam, actually practice. Uh, it's not just a, a, a declaration. They don't just make statements and sign statements. Uh, they, they, they live the statements. Uh, you know, this, our, our scriptures say, and the word became flesh. Our scriptures say that. Where well, you can see the words have become flesh in this movement called Natura Uliman. They, they, they are living, they are living the excellence. And the, and the Quran says in it, it says, take the best thereof. Take the best thereof. And that's what we see happening uh, with this organization, the largest body of those who has the religious label, the religious identity of Muslims. And we want more of the world to look at this model. We want them to look at this relationship because this, these are the kind of things that Almighty God wants us to do. Uh, I want to just share this while I have the microphone before we close out. Uh, over here we have our neighbor, uh, Brother Brian. He's evangelical. He's a neighbor. In 2015, this, this mosque here was threatened uh, by a white supremacist hate group. And um, I, was, I was with a delegation in Turkey. And it was publicized. FBI knew about it, uh, Homeland Security, and they informed us, news, and everybody knew about it. Because they, they had chosen 27 mosques uh, across the country. And of course, in D.C., we were the ones that they ch that chose. And, it was well, and they chose our most precious day, uh, which was Friday, to do uh, agitated protests. They, wanted, they made it very clear if they could have had arms, they, wanted to have, they actually wanted to do weapons and agitate. But they were definitely planning to agitate, and they made it very clear. They had, they had been successful in Texas. Uh, doing agitation and causing Muslims to come out of their nature and, and, and do some things. And they wanted to show that here. And uh, so, so while, while, while we were in Turkey, the delegation, the team here, we were communicating on how should we handle this. And as you know, I, I, at that time, I, I was the president of the Interfaith uh, Conference, in which we obviously it's a, it's a large body. We have a lot of leaders. Uh, and they wanted to, to come here. They knew about it. They wanted to come here and let them know that we don't stand alone. And uh, so it was a great response. I mean, it was a, a humorous response. And it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was I always brought tears to my eyes, actually. And uh, so they said, what should we do, man? We have all these leaders that want to come here on that day. And so we decided, the decision was, please thank them, but ask them not to come. And because if they come, then of course, that, 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 that in itself makes it a newsworthy event because they're responding, which means they're going to be interviewed and have to name this group. I didn't want to get that group any attention. I didn't want their name to be mentioned. So I asked them not to come. And uh, so the majority of them supported that. We did have some join us for the Friday prayer, but nobody did anything, anything big. But something surprisingly helped us uh, happen. The next morning we woke up, uh, on, that, on that board over there, you will see there's a flyer on that board over there of some things we've been doing in the Messiah. If you get a chance, take a look at it. But it says something along this lines. Uh, this is a hate-free zone. We stand with our neighbors, Messiah Muhammad. And we didn't know who did that. They had them all over trees and posts around the neighborhood. And come to find out, it wasn't the Muslim that initiated that. It was our neighbors, our neighbors. Uh, that initiated that, and they didn't. And they didn't tell. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And this is this is the beauty of what we're seeing in an organization on an international scale that our Almighty God is showing us through these relationships how we should be behaving and interacting with each other as we move on towards them in our destiny. Thank you. <coughs> Well, if you say this, I have to add, of course, that last year on Christmas, and not for the first time, the young people of your movement mm -hmm. protected churches all over Indonesia. After yes. attack on a church, yeah, they would send their people, young people, standing in front of the churches to assure that they would not be protected during Christmas services. 
this is again what I, what I said, this is doing something. This is not only having nice statements out, this is doing something and if you know how big Indonesia is, you know that this is not just uh, walking around the corner and uh, you really need to have a plan if you want to protect those first. So thank you very much that you did that. So we'll close out the ceremony. I'll read you the statement that is in front of us today. And for those who wish to sign it, Imam Talib has pens. I just remember, I'm just having deja vu here, Imam Talib. Um, the Nation's Mosque Statement is drafted by uh, four organizations. Uh, the Institute for Humanitarian Islam, which is created by the Humanitarian Islam Movement, the spiritual leadership of Nadatu Ulama. The Center for Shared Civilizational Values, which is a framework, a platform established again by Nadatulama spiritual leaders so that people who are Muslim and non-Muslim, people of every faith and no faith can have a common platform on which to communicate in order to identify shared civilizational values that can serve as a foundation for strengthening and preserving and strengthening a rules-based international order in the 21st century. And then also the World Evangelical Alliance and the Nation's Mosque. So you recognize these four entities here in this uh, statement. The Nation's Mosque statement. Spiritual leaders of Indonesia's Nadlatu Ulama, the world's largest Muslim organization, the World Evangelical Alliance, which represents 600 million Protestants in 140 countries, and Masjid Muhammad, the nation's mosque, a community of the late Imam W. Dean Muhammad in Washington, D.C., the first mosque in the United States built by descendants of enslaved African Americans, call upon people of goodwill of every faith and nation to join in building a global alliance founded upon shared civilizational values. This global alliance seeks to prevent the political weaponization of identity, curtail the spread of communal hatred, promote solidarity and respect among the diverse people, cultures, and nations of the world, and foster the emergence of a truly just and harmonious world order founded upon respect for the equal rights and dignity of every human being. So if I may, I would invite the three religious leaders at the front here, Thomas, Pat Thomas um, Imam Talib, um, Pat Yaya, to, if you like to sign the uh, statement. Yeah, any other religious leaders, if you want to sign, please come sign now, please. Uh, uh, imams, reverends, pastors, please. And so what we want to do, we're going to have uh, Imam Nuruddin, uh, who is one of the imams in this is a section. He's also a convener. He convenes imams in the mid-Atlantic section. Uh, he's here with us. I'm going to have him close us out uh, in a prayer, but we're going to have him sign first, and then he can come and close us out. And we want everybody that want to sign this uh, to sign this uh, document. And so while we're doing that, uh, I, I, I wanted to, um, again, show our gratitude and that we're humbled for this event uh, being hosted here. 
on behalf of Mesh Muhammad, the community, the believers uh, 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 feel very warm. We want to thank Pakiyagya. We want to thank uh, Bishop Schermacher. Uh I do have a gift for those two, uh, a book. Um, Albert, can you bring me those books? Can you bring me those books? Uh, they mentioned, they mentioned, we've heard throughout this, uh, Imam W.D. Muhammad, the one who actually, uh, you heard Pakiyaya mention about how we've embraced our American identity. Uh, our community is the first community in America that physically picked up the American flag and embraced our identity. And it was actually done at a time when many, some were burning the flag uh, as well. So we can have, um, uh, for Park Yaya, I just mentioned these, we get these to, to them. A uh, book entitled The Noah's Flood, a, a lecture series by Imam W.D. Muhammad. And Life, the Final Battlefield, also by Imam W.D. Muhammad, uh, will be presented uh, to our bishop and to our, uh, uh, His Excellency, uh, Park Yaya.
But we just need to cl do the closing prayer so we can close the live stream out. So we just gonna you can go ahead and stay where you are. And we're gonna let Imam Nuruddin give us the closing prayer. Assalamu alaikum. Let me let me just before we before we offer this prayer here and leave here today. First of all, I want to give you the greetings from the national convener of imams, Imam Bashir Ali, who couldn't be here with us today. But he certainly sent his well wishes and his appreciation for what Imam Talib is doing here in Washington. Mr. Secretary, Bishop, Rabbi, all of you who are here today, respected leaders today, we certainly appreciate your attendance here today. We hold this mosque in very, very high esteem. And believe me, Talib would not be here if he didn't have the character qualifications to lead this mosque. That's right. And the work that he has done throughout the globe, and now we see what's going on here in Indonesia and other places around the globe is very, very noteworthy. So I couldn't, the spirit drove me here this weekend. I had to come. In fact, I told his wife, the Spirit drove me here this weekend. I had to be here for this because I haven't seen anything. I'm, I'm, I've been in this community 50 years. I haven't seen anything this big. To have these type of leaders come here to our community, to this mosque, recognize what we're doing and making us a part of it and them being a part of what we're doing, this is very, very noteworthy. So, Tyler, want to say to you, we really appreciate what you're doing. We have to quite naturally encourage you to keep up the work. Um, and, and, and let me just say this as the convener, we're going to pay you more money. <laughs> At some point we will. But let us make, let us make, let us make prayer. Let's bow ahead. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alameen. Ar Rahmanir Rahim. Maliki Yomidin. Ia can Abudu wa Ia can Estain. Ich dina Sirota Mustakim. Sirota Ladina and Amta Alehim. Rayro Magdubi Alehim Walla Dalin. We seek refuge with Allah, with God, from the rejected enemy, with God's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. All praise is due to God, the cherisher and sustainer of the worlds, master of the day of judgment. Thee do we worship and thine aid we seek. Show us the straight way, the way of those on whom thou hast bestowed thy grace, those whose portion is not wrath and who go not astray. Amen.